Snowflake provides a number of native SQL development interfaces for working with the platform, amongst which is SnowSight, SnowSQL, and most recently, Snowflake SQL extension for Visual Studio Code. In today's demo, we're going to focus on the Snowflake SQL extension for Visual Studio Code, going through the installation of the extension and exploration of how that extension could be a powerful utility to have within your development workflow. The extension was recently released in the Visual Studio Code Marketplace. Links to this will be in the description below. This is the official extension from Snowflake itself. There might be other extensions there from third party providers, but this particular extension, you're gonna look for the blue check mark to validate this is coming from Snowflake. What we're gonna see here today is the installation of this extension and walk through a quick overview and a quick demo of how this extension could be very useful for your development experience. Let's jump into Visual Studio Code. Assume you have Visual Studio Code installed, go over to extensions and search for the Snowflake extension. This bring up a couple of Snowflake extensions. The one we're looking for is the very first one, the official uh, Snowflake extension. As of making this video, version 0.5.2, your version might be a little bit different. This version is currently in preview. Depending on when you're watching this, you might have it in GA, generally available. Go ahead and do an installation of this extension. It takes a few seconds. The extension was successfully installed and the way we're going to take advantage of that is to go back into our palette so here we're going to see the snowflake icon if this doesn't show up click on the ellipse to see that the extension shows up within your palette click on snowflake this brings us a form for authentication a couple of things are needed first is the account name and any proxy configurations needed for you to authenticate to get the account name go back to the browser and grab the account name from the URL. Copy everything before worksheet. This is called the account name or sometimes called the account locator. Grab that, put that in. Next, continue. This is gonna ask for my username and password if this is how you're gonna choose to authenticate. Alternatively, you can always use single sign-on with your single sign-on provider. We've authenticated with the user through using password. A quick walkthrough of the layout to the left is the navigation options. In the right here is going to be where the scripts and the queries will be written. Expand this for a second. See the account the user authenticated with is through. We can sign in with other users if you have different profiles you want to authenticate with. This might be relevant if you're switching between maybe a data science role to an admin analyst role and you have different profiles or different environments, being able to sign in with those different accounts and switch between them becomes very relevant. Below that is the role. I'm using account admin, and we can turn on by toggling on and off use secondary roles, relevant for folks who use that in their workflow. Next is the database. All the databases this role has access to for this particular principle, we can view all of that along with the schema and the particular warehouse to be used for executing queries. Below the account, we'll see the database explorer all the objects that the principal from above has access to will show up here. We have three databases, DemoDB, Snowflake, and the sample database. Drill into that by opening up particular schemas. Here we'll see the native objects that are available within Snowflake. So tables, stages, procedures, as well as functions. Last but not least is the query history. As we execute queries, all the queries we run in Snowflake, we show up within the query history, we can go back and interact with that. Let's jump in and create our very first worksheet. To do that, click on the worksheet here to create a Snowflake a SQL file. This creates a blank Snowflake SQL file. You can verify that it's a Snowflake SQL file by the Snowflake icon, as well as below, it's gonna tell you this is the language mode. To take advantage of the Snowflake SQL file, begin by writing some queries. So immediately as a query comes on board the screen, you can see there is a statement that says execute. This is how you execute queries when working within the Snowflake SQL worksheet from within the Visual Studio Code extension. This query is gonna specify the schema we need to use to execute this, hit execute, and just that statement will be executed. 
Here, we've executed a statement to set up context with the specific schema we want. Below, you can see the status of that execution. To the left, you can see the query history of what was executed, very relevant if you're doing debugging. And if there are issues, specific outputs, query results, those will all show up uh, from here. Now, let's do something a little bit more exciting by actually writing a SQL statement to execute uh, and query some results. Go ahead and put in a more complex SQL statement. And now you can see with a multi-statement showing up on the canvas, uh, we can execute individually by hitting execute and it executes what's below that. And if you want to execute the next statement, hit execute and this particular statement would execute. Just like that, the results are showing up. Scroll to see the specific results, see the query ID that was executed, how long it took, the date of the execution and some other good information. To the left side is the query history. If you wanted to go back and copy a particular query you executed, you can see the results, copy that history, bring it back to the canvas through V to paste that. If I wanted to copy the history from this, you can also go ahead and click on that. Uh, not only does it show you the query result at the time the query was executed, but you can also copy that query and bring that to the canvas to execute that. We also have the query results here. It's very interactive. You can interact with this. You can sort up or down. You have this live exploration of the data. In addition to having the ability to see the query results, if you're writing a query, by selecting that table, you see all the metadata from that table, columns, data types, and any comments that was associated with that particular table. Now, if you wanted to do some queries, just go ahead and copy that table come in and control V paste that the table will show up just like that to execute this and see the results. Just go ahead and execute that. Now we can execute always one by one down the list, but you might have a situation where you have a lot of statements you want to execute. This is where the execute all statement comes into place to execute every statement we have on this particular worksheet. Hit this icon to the top right and all of the statements would be executed. We might have a situation just to simulate here where we have a worksheet with tons of queries in the hundreds or thousands with this worksheet with lots of queries. One of the beauties with Visual Studio Code is the ability to see the preview panel on the right side or the minimap of the code. So you can drill in into the specific area of your code just like that, you're taken to that specific area. If I want to go back to the top, instead of doing a very long scroll back to the top, I can just go to the minimap and here we're brought back to the top, just like that. Another very beautiful option to have for within Visual Studio Code. Now let's go back and explore some really unique features within the Visual Studio Code extension to supercharge your productivity when working on Snowflake. The very first one we're going to see is the IntelliSense and the autocomplete. If we begin writing a statement, you can see it's suggesting a lot of options for me. Am I doing Streamlit, ST-Collect, or are we doing a select statement? This is a keyword, select. We're going to do start from. We need to specify the database. The database could be DemoDB as we start writing. You can see a lot of options are being shown to us. Obviously, I'm coming with a database. If I want a schema, this schema is being suggested to me. If I want a particular table, the tables are being suggested to me. Go ahead and take the ref table and execute this. With any log, we can see some records within this particular table. Not a lot, but the IntelliSense is a very powerful option to have. Go back in as we hover over particular keywords. There is documentation right at your fingertips for you to use. Here, keyword is select, view documentation. And this can take us to the documentation page. So very powerful to have right there is the documentation link. Now, the next thing we can do is in addition to a basic keywords like select, we might be working with a function which is a little bit more complex. Take for example, this sum function. And we want to understand how to use this. Again, here, if you hover over that, the documentation is right there at your fingertips for you to use and to drill down into that particular function. If I go in and we have this column, which is being returned, it's a line status. And for some reason, we wanted to change this to uppercase. 
of course there is a function in sql to upper as i start typing we do upper you can see it's telling us do we want to undrop do we want a unicode the different icons here tells you what is being done so this will be a keyword and then this will be a function do upper with the definition being provided right in front of us telling us exactly what this function is all about just like that you have this very interactive dynamic experience where the documentation for keywords and building functions is available as you hover in to understand what the code is all about to speed up your development experience as we execute results we might want to collaborate with team members or with partners or vendors or suppliers by sharing this data with them snowflake has a very capable data sharing capability to take advantage of but if you just want to provide a simple file a csv file for someone to use you can come in below with the results you've generated click on save and save that as a csv and share that with uh, somebody else to use to recap what we've seen into this demo, we can leverage the Visual Studio Code extension for Snowflake to supercharge your development experience for folks that are native with the Visual Studio Code environment as a development platform. Here you can come in, create many different profiles, use those profiles for your work as an analyst, a developer, an engineer, an architect, or an admin, you can have different profiles to authenticate with. Once you have your profiles, uh, select your configuration, so your database, your schema, your role, your warehouse, which are all needed. And based on those configurations, you can explore the database as well as have access to query history. The query pane gives us access to writing queries with IntelliSense, auto-completion for logic, object names, keywords, and building functions. There is signature to help you understand building functions and how to use them. There is documentation for keywords and as you hover over particular functions to really supercharge your experience. You can execute individual statements or you can execute full statements to execute everything on your worksheets. And now, because this is a file that's living within Visual Studio Code, you can interact with the results, sort the results up or down, save the results and collaborate with somebody else. And the beauty of doing all of this within Visual Studio Code is the ability now to version control your code. If say you have integration with Git in the Git workflow or a CI CD pipeline, you now have the ability to version control that code, which is something that just natively as of making this video, you might not have working out the box or leveraging the Snowflake, Snowside worksheets on the browser. There are pros and cons to each option, but if Visual Studio Code is your workflow, then this is a very powerful extension to have. Extension is available on the Visual Studio Code marketplace and we've seen how to install that.